In this video, we're going to solve a problem involving projectile motion at an angle. Here's the problem we're going to solve. As I read this problem, I'm going to underline the given information in green and then what the question is actually asking for in red. This will help me solve the problem later. A football is kicked through the uprights with an initial velocity of 22.4 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees above the ground. If the ball was at the peak of its flight as it passed through the uprights, how far of a field goal did the kicker make? And we're going to assume the ball's trajectory was perfectly parabolic and assume there's no air resistance. So here's what the problem is saying. If I go to my picture here, we have a ball that's being kicked. It's going to travel through the uprights and hit the back of the net there. Uh, but what it's saying is that we want to find how far this field goal is, so right up until this point right here. And that's also going to be the peak of the ball's flight, the highest point. I'm going to draw a little sketch to show what that looks like. So here is the vector. It's 22.4 meters per second. It's at 30 degrees above the horizontal. And this ball is going to take on a parabolic trajectory. Just imagine that's perfect. And right here at the peak of its flight, that's where the uprights are going to be. So this is a projectile motion problem, which means we're going to have a vertical component to the velocity and a horizontal component to the velocity. Now we have to keep these two components separate from each other, but they're going to be related by time. So time is going to be the thing that kind of brings these things together. We're going to work with the vertical component first of the velocity. That's going to give us time, and then we're going to use that time to be able to find the horizontal distance. I'm going to redraw this vector here so I can separate this velocity into its vertical component. And so the vertical component is going to be right here. We separate this vector into its components. It'll also have a horizontal component. This makes a right angle triangle. And so I'm really just solving for this V. I'm going to call it V initial in the Y direction. Now the angle here is 30 degrees, so I know that from the problem. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sine of 30 degrees, and that's going to be equal to the opposite side, which is my V initial in the Y, over the hypotenuse, which is 22.4. So I'm going to be solving for V initial Y, which is this vertical component. And so I end up with a velocity of 11.2 meters per second. And so that is this component right here going vertically. So the reason I want to work with the vertical component here is because I want to find time. I want to see how long the ball is going to stay in the air. Once I find time, that's what's going to transfer over to the horizontal component, and then I can find the distance that the ball is going to travel. This is pretty complex right now because I have vertical and horizontal components, but since I've separated them, I'm just thinking of the ball as if it's going straight up and coming right back down. And I know that the ball is going to begin with an initial velocity upwards, because I just found this, of 11.2 meters per second. And then it's going to come back down when it reaches the top right at the brief moment it's at the top of the peak of its flight, it's going to reach zero, and then it's going to come back down. It's going to keep getting faster and faster until right before it hits the ground, it's going to return to 11.2 meters per second, but this time I'm going to say it's negative because it's traveling downwards. So when we're dealing with projectile motion at an angle and we're working in the vertical side of things and we want to find time, we're going to use the first equation of motion. So here's the first equation of motion. You can review the video on the uh, equations of motion or the kinematics equation so you can see how all these different equations work. But this is the first one. This is going to work really well for us because there is a final velocity in the y direction, which is right here. This is the velocity as it reaches the ground. And there's initial velocity, which is this one, as it starts traveling upwards. The acceleration, since it's in free fall, the entire time it's moving, it's going to experience acceleration due to gravity. So this A is actually the constant G, which is 9.81 meters per second. Now I'm going to rearrange this because I want to solve for time. 
So I have time equal to the final velocity in the y minus the initial velocity in the ui uh, over g. So I'm going to plug in the numbers. And I've been really careful to make sure I have the appropriate signs. Since the final velocity going downwards here is negative, the upwards one is positive, and so I, this is the final velocity, it's negative, 11.2 meters per second, minus, that's this part right here, 11.2 meters per second, and I have that over 9.81 meters per second squared, and I made sure to keep that minus as well, because gravity goes downwards, and since this velocity going downwards is negative, gravity would have to be negative as well. Let's see what our time comes out to. So time is going to be equal to 2.3 seconds. All right, now this is the thing, time, that's going to be related to the horizontal side of things. Now, I only worked in vertical, the up and down here, and then this is the time from where it leaves the ground to where it hits the ground. Now, if I look at the problem, it's asking me how far uh, of a field goal did the kicker make, and the ball, as it uh, passed through the uprights, was at the peak of its flight, so right in this spot. Now, I know the time it took to start and finish. Basically, I'm looking for right halfway, right in the middle. And so what I can do now is I can work in the horizontal component. And so I redrew that vector here. And this time, I want to work with this part of the velocity vector. So this is the velocity in the x direction. And I can use cosine this time of the angle because cosine of 30 degrees is going to be equal to the adjacent angle which in this or the adjacent side which is vx over the hypotenuse which is 22.4 meters per second I'll solve for v in the x and so the x part of the velocity is 19.4 meters per second now what I could do is I could find the entire distance that it traveled and I could divide that by 2 because I only want the halfway point or I could take this time and just go ahead and divide it by 2 and then uh, calculate how far it will travel. Either way will work. So the equation I could use would be velocity is equal to distance. I'm going to call that delta x, change in the x direction over time. So it's distance over time. I know the time and now I know the velocity and I'm going to solve for the x direction. I'm going to go ahead and take time and just take a half of it. And remember time is right here 2.3 seconds. So half of that would be 1.15 seconds and the reason I did that again is because I want to know how far the field goals was so it's right here in the middle in other words half of what it would take to go the whole distance and I'm gonna plug in these numbers and solve for delta x and so the distance here in the x direction is equal to 22.3 meters and that is my final answer that's how far this field goal was so just to recap, when you're solving a problem that involves projectile motion at an angle like this, you need to separate the vertical component and the horizontal component. We start with the vertical component, we take that velocity vector and we just find the up direction of it. That's what we did here with sine of 30. The reason we do that is because we want to find time. That's the whole key to it. I use the first equation of motion to find time the time will transfer over to the horizontal component that's this part of the vector and I then can find the distance traveled in the x direction uh, using that time and that is projectile motion at an angle